From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Charlie Burton speaking. Oh, morning, Burton. So you're still alive, huh? If that was an attempt at humor, it was entirely out of place. Well, it's early yet. I'm the comedian, and I'll make the jokes. Your job is to protect my life. Don't tell me you've been shot at again. This time of morning? Boy, whoever it is really must hate you, Burton. Dollar, so help me... So help you nothing. You may be good old lovable Charlie to 40 million television viewers, but to me, you're just a pain in the neck. I'll remind you, To my clients, you're worth a half million bucks because he was fool enough to write an insurance policy on your life, but not to me. My price on you is a fast three cents. Give or take a couple. My life has been threatened. Sure, and that's why I'm here. But yesterday, when I tried to get you to cooperate, you called it a practical joke. Well, I'm not calling it that now. No, because somebody tossed a bullet at you last night and scared the living pants off of you. Well, call Captain Peral of the Ensenada Police. Uh, Mr. Dollar. Look, I need please. another hour's sleep, so don't phone my room again before 9 o'clock. Goodbye. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location in Sonata, Mexico... To the home office, Union States Casualty Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the laughing matter. Expense account continued. Item 10, 50 cents, room service on a glass of orange juice. Another hour's sleep was out of the question. Just hearing his voice on the phone left me too mad to relax. One of America's most popular comedians, a living legend. And yet his whole cast, the people down here with him on location, hated the ground he walked on. Personally, I was on their side. But my job was to protect his life from some unknown enemy who'd sent him a threatening note. And last night, the threat had become action in the form of a shot fired from the darkness. It was my job to see that the killer didn't get a second chance. And that's what I was being paid for, and the fact that Charlie Burton was a Class A stinker was irrelevant. Frank Maltz, executive producer of the Charlie Burton Show, and practically the only early patron of the hotel breakfast room, was sitting at a table alone. Good morning, Johnny. I left him sitting in almost the same position at 2 o'clock in the morning. Only the table then was in a backstreet cantina in town. He was apparently remembering it, and he avoided my eyes until the waiter had brought my coffee and gone away. I guess I, uh, I made quite a fool of myself last night, huh? Oh, when was that? <laughs> nice of you to ask, Johnny. Mmm, <sighs> this is good coffee. Mm. Oh, you'd been making the rounds last night, for whatever reasons, and you felt like talking. But I, uh, I wouldn't call that making a fool of yourself. All right. Thanks. You were sober enough when I left you. Oh, sure. You just sat there and let me talk it out. Where'd you go, anyway? I came out of the cantina a few minutes later, you disappeared. Captain Peral, Ensenada Police, picked me up in a prowl car. He'd located that maid from the hotel here. We went to her home and talked to her. So? Well, for the moment at least, you and Al and Gloria Dale are apparently off the hook. Oh? The maid says Burton was always annoying her whenever she was on duty here. He was. I told him to lay off. Well, her husband found out and came out here to the hotel yesterday evening. I saw him and his wife arguing out there on the terrace just after dusk. But I didn't know what it was all about at that time. Anyway, that's the last she saw him. He didn't come home last night and he's still missing. I just talked to Peral on the phone. They've got half the police force looking for him. And you figure he's the one who took a shot at Charlie last night. Kind of adds up, doesn't it? Well, I guess so. I hope they find him, Johnny, before he finds Charlie again. I'd hate to see a poor devil take a rap for killing a louse who isn't worth it. Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, the chances are they will. Didn't either one of you fellas ever get to bed last night? Not for long. Morning, Al. Oh, my goodness, Frank. You look awful, man. You must have slept on your face. I look the same as I look every morning. Want some breakfast, Al? No, thanks. I'm skipping it. I'm going to try to get in a dip in that pool before old blubber tummy oozes out of his feather bed. Oh, I don't think he'll be using the pool this morning. Not if he remembers what we're shooting today. It's that castaway sequence, isn't it? Yeah, we'll get that first. But later this afternoon, if the light on the water is okay, I want to get those shots of him swimming ashore. Good. Keep him on retakes till he gets waterlogged. It's uh, it's kind of a slapstick desert island thing, Johnny. Oh? Yeah, yeah. You see, Charlie and I are supposed to have been on this yacht, and it sank. 
and I just disappear. But there's some stock shots of Charlie swimming like crazy in a stock shot of a deserted South Sea Island. And finally, Charlie comes crawling up onto the beach. That's the sequence we're going to shoot this morning. I see. He's pooped. He's dying, you know. Then I step out from behind a bush, and I'm wearing a full-dress suit, white tie and tails. He thinks he's crazy or something. It starts building from there, then, Johnny. Uh, yeah, I get the idea. He's thirsty, see? So I reach under my coat and bring out a soft drink, an ice-cold bottle. And I open it and give it to him. It says, cut quality beverages on the bottle, C-O-T-T. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so Charlie asks, is it any good? And I say, it's cut, man. And he says, so what? And I say, so it's cut to be good. See, Johnny, it, it's out-and-out out slapstick, but it works pretty well on camera. Yeah. yeah, it keeps building, you see. I keep producing things out of the bushes. A table and chair, tablecloth, dishes and silver, caviar, bottle of wine, roast turkey, then a string quartet, and finally a line of dancing girls. And the payoff's a shaggy dog. He says, look, we were shipwrecked together. How you doing all of this? And I say, it's easy. I got a cousin in Congress. It's a lot better on film, Johnny. A lot better than it sounds, you know, stripped down this way. Uh, yeah, well, I'm not exactly a fan of Burton's. Oh, he's got some good stuff in this one, Mr. Dollar. In fact, he's got all the good stuff. Only thing I'm in there for is to feed him the lines. As usual, of course. If I ever get a decent role in his show, I'll drop dead. Oh, really? Attention! That's not funny, Al. At ease. I said it's not funny. You thought it was when you did it on the show last month. May I remind you that your service is going to be easily dispensed with. Good. Fire me. Al. If I could get out of this lousy contract with you, I could start on the PCT tomorrow. And at five times what you're paying Take me. Take it easy, Al. No, no, by all means. They'll Don't set talk. me up in my own show. And they'll put it in a time slot right opposite yours. In three months, Charlie, I could bump you clear off the screen. You don't say so. I'll beat it, will you? Okay, Frank. Sorry you had to get caught in the crossfire, Mr. Dollar. Nothing personal. Forget it. See you later, gentlemen. You'll be on that set in a half hour, not a minute later. Yes, sir. You certainly are one big happy family, aren't you? Dollar, that kid was a nobody when I picked him up. You're wrong, Charlie. That kid is a real talent, and you know it. You see? You see what I have to deal with? He's done as much for this show in the past year as you have. You see, Dollar, I'm forced to live in the very presence of my enemy. Who made them your enemies, Burton? Look... My only concern has always been the welfare of those less fortunate than myself. Those who depend on me for their professional careers and their livelihoods. I understand there's some difference of opinion about that. Well, it's envy. Nothing but envy. Would you like some more coffee, Johnny? No, thanks. I've had about all I can stand. Yeah, so have I. May I ask what you're doing to protect my life, Mr. Dollar, if anything at all? Oh, I've taken the usual routine precautions. Routine? I demand more than routine. Not from me. You don't demand anything. I'm working for the insurance company. Then I'll complain to them. Good, good. Why don't you cancel your policy at the same time? Then I can get off this assignment. Couldn't cancel it if I wanted to. My sponsors wouldn't allow it. It's for their protection, not mine. I know that. I think you'd like to see me murdered. Oh, no. No, you're wrong there. That would mean I'd uh, loused up an assignment and I'd take pride in my work. But you wouldn't care personally. Uh, no comments. Well, I'll demand protection from the local police. You've already got it. Captain Peral had two men on duty the last night after that shot was fired, watching your room. I didn't see them. They didn't intend for you to see them. Relax, Burton. If the worst does happen, ballistics can probably identify the killer after we get the slug out of your body. Dollar, this is no laughing matter. Then why did you treat it like one? Why did you tear up that threatening letter? Why didn't you call the police in right then? Why didn't you cooperate with me yesterday when I got here? And why the devil did you make a pass at an 18-year-old girl in the first place and get her husband out gunning for you? You mean you know who's trying to kill me? If it's any satisfaction to you, Burton, just in case he gets past us, you probably have been killed by a man named Nacho Morales. His wife is a maid here at the hotel, as you no doubt know. Uh, that, uh, little native girl? Yeah. That little native girl. Oh, now, look. Look, both of you. No, I was wrong. I admit it. I just, just lost my head, I guess. When a man's under pressure all this time, as I am, he doesn't always think straight. Now, I didn't mean any harm toward her. Maybe you'll be able to convince Nacho of that if he waits long enough to listen. No, don't, don't, please. Now, I, I know you hate me. All of you do, but... I'm not as bad as you think. You just don't know the load a star has to carry. Then why don't you tell us about it? You, Frank... You don't think I'm being fair with Al. You think I'm holding him back, not giving him a chance. Well, you're wrong. I'm actually carrying him. 
teaching him things I've learned over the years. Oh, he knows quite a bit now, Charlie. So you don't believe me? You don't think I know what I'm talking about? Well, let's... All right. All right, I'll show you. Al said he was written down in today's sequence. He said that I, I had the great role. You heard him say well, it. Well, yes, Then Charlie, let him have it. I'll what? trade with him. You mean that? Yes, I mean it. Let him change any line he wants. To fit his style, he can play it any way he likes. I'll take that role he says is so bad, and I'll still come out the star. All right, all right, all right. Charlie, we'll have a go at it. Fine. I'll see you on the set, unless somebody manages to kill me first. Good morning, gentlemen. Oh, I never thought I'd live to see the day. Yeah, that shot last night must have really shaken him up. Oh, that kid will make him look sick, Johnny. He doesn't know what he's in for. Well, there's one way to find out. Oh, wait a minute, Johnny. I've been thinking about something you said. Oh? That maid, uh, Morales' wife, does she speak English? No, nope, just Spanish. Well, what about her husband? Same deal, only Spanish. Well, but the note, Johnny, the murder threat Charlie got, that was written in English. Yeah, I know. The South Sea Island set was built on the beach at the far end of the bay. The technicians and the rest of the cast were already there when Maltz and I arrived, and they started shooting 15 minutes later. Gloria Dale wasn't in the sequence, so she slept in at the hotel. Some of Captain Peral's men were on hand, on the lookout for Nacho Morales, but he didn't show. By three in the afternoon, they were nearly finished. They'd shot the last scene once, but Maltz decided on a retake. So Hal sat down again at the fully laid table on the beach, and they started to roll. He poured himself another glass of colored water from the prop wine bottle and began to carve the roast turkey while he exchanged lines with Burton. Then suddenly Al missed a cue, faulted on a line, and Maltz cut the cameras. Al pushed back from the table, stood up slowly, then staggered and fell. I rushed toward him, pushed through the crowd that was gathering, and kneeled down beside him. But he was already dead. And now here's our star to tell you about the final intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a frantic game of musical chairs with every player desperate. Because the loser in this game gets the electric chair. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>